Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, my name is Vikas Agarwal, and I'm the Regional Head of Policy for Emerging Markets at the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. Доброе утро, дамы и господа. Мне приятно быть с вами здесь сегодня. Меня зовут Викас Агарвал, и я являюсь региональным руководителем по политике для развивающихся рынков Глобальной ассоциации профессионалов в области финансов и учета. I'd like to start by thanking the team here at the Kazan Federal University for the hospitality and for inviting me to speak here today. Прежде всего, я хотел бы поблагодарить команду Казанского федерального университета за гостеприимство и за то, что uh, предоставили возможность мне сегодня выступить. Uh, I hope you're that the accountancy profession is vital for economies to grow and to prosper. And that's why we work all over the world, including here in Russia, to build uh, the profession and make society more fair and more transparent. With more than 219,000 highly qualified members and nearly 530,000 students around the world, our network is not only on top of emerging trends, but is actually helping to shape them. And it is those trends I'd like to talk about today. Uh, позвольте мне прежде всего представить ассоциацию присяжных сертифицированных uh, бухгалтеров uh, в аббревиатуре ACCA. ACCA является самым перспективным профессиональным органом бухгалтерского учета в мире. Бухгалтерское дело является жизненно важным для роста и процветания экономики, поэтому мы работаем по всему миру, чтобы развить эту профессию и сделать организацию общества более справедливой и прозрачной. Наше профессиональное сообщество насчитывает более 219 тысяч высококвалифицированных участников и около 530 тысяч студентов по всему миру. Оно находится на пике новых тенденций, также активно помогает их создавать. Именно об этих тенденциях я бы хотел с вами сегодня поговорить. Technology is playing a major role in how organizations, large and small, make decisions. So today I'm going to be talking about the technologies that are, that are impacting society, um, the skills necessary to manage new technologies, and what this means for Russia and for emerging markets. Говоря о будущем цифровых финансов, вы можете сразу подумать о мобильном банкинге, но о нем я расскажу чуть позже. Важно понимать, что еще происходит в настоящий момент. Технологии играют важную роль в том, как организации принимают решения. Итак, сегодня я буду говорить о технологии, которые влияют на общество, навыках, необходимых для управления новыми технологиями и какое значение это имеет для развивающихся рынков. So, what are the opportunities? It's important to note that uh, they vary by size, by organization, by sector, um, and by the age of company. Uh, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to technology. Um, and so whether you are a small business or a large business, how you implement it uh, will vary quite greatly. Итак, каковы же возможности? Важно отметить, что они будут варьироваться в зависимости от организации, сектора, возраста компании. Таким образом, не существует единого правильного пути. Занимаетесь ли вы большим или крупным бизнесом? В зависимости от этого будут и возможности, которые будут использованы. ACCA has an in-house research unit that produces uh, uh, research and material on a whole wide range of topics. And so last summer we produced a report called Race for Relevance in which we put a spotlight on a number of new technologies that are either impacting businesses now or will do more so in the future. Наша ассоциация на регулярной основе проводит исследования, и прошлым летом мы подготовили отчет под названием «Борьба за значимость» или дословно «Борьба за релевантность», в котором мы акцентировали внимание на ряде технологий, которые либо влияют на бизнес сейчас, либо будут влиять в будущем. I'm going to go through a few of those now, and I'm going to start with um, artificial intelligence. It's quite a broad technology, um, and we're, we're now about seeing the impact of it. Um, and the reason being for that is that uh, new opportunities are emerging as the cost of processing power falls. Um, 
Я бы хотел начать с одной из таких технологий, как искусственный интеллект. Это довольно обширная технология, влияние которой мы сейчас наблюдаем по мере появления возможностей и снижения стоимости вычислительных мощностей. I should say it's not just about humanoid robots, though many people think that that's the case. Um, and I should say actually that they do have a role to play. You may see a lot more of these sorts of robots in the future. But AI gives us the ability to apply technologies to detect patterns and to solve problems, which is important for changing society. И я также должен сказать, что речь идет не только о человекоподобных роботах, но и они, хотя и они играют определенную роль. Искусственный интеллект дает нам возможность применять технологии для выявления закономерности и решения проблем, что важно для меняющегося общества. The ability to detect patterns is incredibly important, and as we want to predict future trends, having technology enables us to improve that process. Um, so AI is an encompassing term that embraces a number of different technologies, one of which is machine learning. Um, but alongside AI, there's a robotic process automation, which does exactly what it says on the tin. Здесь также важно отметить возможность применять технологии для выявления закономерности. И искусственный интеллект — это всеобъемлющий термин, охватывающий ряд технологий, включая машинное обучение. Uh, наряду с искусственным интеллектом стоит роботизированная автоматизация процессов, и по названию можно понять, что она из себя представляет. So what you can see from this slide is the type of tasks that can be automated. Uh, and what it does is it improves data entry uh, and input quality, and, and it improves efficiency. Now, the reason this is important for you as finance professionals is that these are the tasks that you don't need to do anymore. You can focus on higher value Uh, skills, higher value work. Uh, на этом слайде показаны типы задач, которые можно автоматизировать с улучшенным качеством ввода данных и большей эффективностью. Почему это важно uh, в сфере бухгалтерского дела и финансов? Uh, поскольку uh, эти задачи вам уже uh, выполнять uh, больше не нужно. Uh, эти процессы uh, в настоящий момент являются автоматизированными, и вы можете uh, сфокусировать uh, все ваше внимание на ваших профессиональных навыках uh, и uh, на, uh, собственно, ценности. And I mentioned data uh, because data is incredibly important, but data on its own is entirely useless. And so we think about analytics. Well, analytics uh, is exactly that. It's using the data to detect patterns. It's finding out the meaning behind the data. Почему же именно аналитика? Потому что данные бесполезны, если вы не знаете, что с ними делать. А данные позволяют нам выявлять закономерности. And with an exponential amount of data being created, when harnessed properly, it enables business leaders to shorten decision-making timelines, to monitor performance in real time. It allows us to embrace the latest trends more quickly, and it allows us to react to competition more readily. Благодаря экспоненциальному росту объема создаваемых данных при правильном использовании бизнес лидеры лидеры в области бизнес индустрии могут сократить сроки принятия решений чтобы отслеживать производительность в режиме реального времени быстрее охватить последние тенденции быстрее реагировать на конкуренцию the next technology I want to talk about very briefly is cloud computing uh, I'm not going to say a lot on it um, but the point is there are many variants uh, there are many benefits there are many risks what it's doing is reducing the costs that businesses have to, to make to uh, access data storage, uh, data uh, managing, uh, and data sharing. Я не буду еще одна технология, которую хочу хочу вкратце обозначить, это облачные вычисления. Я не буду много говорить об облачных вычислениях. Единственное, что я хотел бы отметить, это то, что они позволяют сэкономить увеличить количество сотрудников. Кроме того, облачные вычисления позволяют работать с, с данными, с хранением данных. I should say that this is this is uh, growing more and more uh, relevant as new regulations around data location comes in. So GDPR is a very good example of how companies, how individuals have to be concerned about 
data localization, data storage. And Russia, of course, has its own very, very specific rules. Um, and so when starting businesses, when thinking about new technologies, you have to be concerned about how you manage this data and where you store it. Uh, таким образом, эта тема является очень актуальной и в зависимости от страны, uh, в которой вы ведете uh, свой бизнес, uh, в зависимости от страны, где вы uh, применяете технологии облачных вычислений, uh, будут определенные uh, регулирования. Uh, в частности, uh, в России будут собственные правила, поэтому uh, важно uh, их знать uh, и uh, знать, каким образом вы будете осуществлять хранение ваших данных непосредственно. Okay, very quick show of hands. Who knows what blockchain is? Who knows who's heard of blockchain? Кто слышал о технологии блокчейн? Поднимите руки. Who knows what it does? Uh, кто знает, в чем суть технологии блокчейн? Как она работает? Well, you don't have to know what it does uh, or how it works, um, but for the moment, it is becoming more and more important uh, and more and more prevalent, actually. Um, what we found is that over 40 central banks around the world are actually experimenting with its use. Um, it does have a number of different uses, but where you might find most interest is around trade finance. Um, and it's actually an area where it's adding great value uh, and where, as a world that's globalizing, it's becoming incredibly more important. Uh, даже несмотря на то, что uh, вам может быть неизвестно, каким образом uh, работает технология блокчейн, блокчейн, тем не менее, становится все более важным, распространенным uh, и даже более распространенным, чем вы думаете. Чтобы продемонстрировать uh, значение технологии блокчейн, uh, я приведу пример. Uh, более 40 центральных банков экспериментируют с его использованием. Финансирование торговых операций — это та сфера, где блокчейн приносит uh, большую ценность, uh, что в более uh, в настоящий момент в глобализованном мире невероятно важно. Блокчейн, на самом деле, создает много новых вопросов. Если мы думаем о том, как блокчейн работает, где контракты происходят или где они подписаны, как аккаунтанты и финансовые профессионалы, если серверы находятся в one country, do you apply their tax laws? If they're located in a different country, do you apply their tax laws? These are the kinds of challenges that accountants, governments, finance professionals are facing when thinking about blockchain. So it's an area of interest for the future. Таким образом, как и ранее упоминалось, технологии блокчейн и правила, и регулирование будут зависеть от страны, где вы непосредственно используете эту технологию. Поэтому именно работа блокчейн становится все более и более важной. Окей, next one, more fun. Uh, social media. Who has a Facebook account? Социальные сети. У кого есть аккаунт на Facebook? Who has Instagram? У кого есть Instagram? Who has Twitter? Twitter. Who has ever made a complaint via a social media platform? Вы когда-нибудь писали жалобу непосредственно через платформу, социальную сеть какую-либо? So, uh, I love social media. I think it's a great invention. You know, we're sharing holiday photos and uh, funny cat videos. Um, but probably the more useful element is I can share real-time news stories. Uh, I can share... Um, information updates. I can and I can complain via Twitter, and it sounds small, but it's actually incredibly important. Social media. Personally, I love them. I love to share with праздничными фотографиями, фотографиями с отпуска, видео э, о кошках. Но что более важно, я могу делиться новостями в реальном времени, а также жалобами клиентов. And the reason is that society now expects uh, a response in minutes rather than hours or days. If we had a complaint before, we'd have to write a letter or an email and it might take, you know, quite some time to get a response. If you tweet a company, chances are you'll get a response within five minutes to half an hour. Общество теперь ожидает ответ в течение нескольких минут, а не часов. Раньше для того, чтобы пожаловаться, нужно было отправить письмо. Это занимало достаточно большое количество времени. А сейчас вы можете просто твитнуть какой-либо компании, по отношению к которой у вас есть претензия, и вы получите ответ от этой компании в течение от 15 минут до 30 минут. От 5 минут, простите, до 30 минут. There have been uh, multiple examples all around the world of brands being impacted negatively by a failure to respond. Um, but at the same time, the power of social media allows us to, to share positive messages. It's incredibly powerful on that front. Um, and to create viral trends. Um, 
Было много примеров того, как на имидж брендов влияла их неспособность ответить соответствующим образом. Но социальные сети также являются невероятно мощными инструментами для обмена позитивными сообщениями и создания популярных или так называемых вирусных тенденций. As an example, who uh, has heard of the ice bucket, cha ice bucket challenge? Кто-то из вас слышал про ice bucket challenge? That was the most shared trend or viral trend of 2016. Um, and who knows what it was for? В 2016-м это был такой вирусный тренд. Вы знаете, с чего вообще все началось? Very few people. The point is, is that those sorts of trends can pick up incredibly quickly and send a really, really positive message. Now that video was actually about a charity, um, but the point is it got people talking about it and it, and it, and it created a movement very, very quickly. Um, такие популярные вирусные тенденции uh, очень сильны, имеют uh, большое, uh, большое значение, поскольку распространяются очень быстро. Вообще изначально Ice Bucket Challenge uh, было... Um, благотворительным uh, uh, актом, uh, но uh, информация о нем распространилась очень быстро, благодаря соцсетям. Okay, so with the good, inevitably comes the bad. Uh, now, as finance professionals of the future, you have to be aware of this, that a cyber attack is inevitable no matter how large or small the company is. Но с хорошим неизбежно приходит и плохое. Кибератака неизбежна, независимо от того, насколько велика или мала организация. Um, and what's really interesting is that cyber criminals are becoming smarter in how they behave. Uh, a recent report by Swift has, has shown that attackers are now working from nine to five during the day to lower detection. Uh, before we imagine these, you know, people behind a computer working all night, drinking sugar drinks and eating fast food, but now they're actually working office hours. И киберпреступники также становятся умнее. Недавний отчет Swift показал, что злоумышленники теперь работают с девяти до пяти, чтобы снизить уровень обнаружения. Um, таким образом, они работают с 9 до 5, uh, uh, пьют uh, свои uh, напитки uh, с сахаром, как uh, и обычные офисные работники. The one that, well, the three things to remember uh, are this for your future careers is to build resilience, to create recovery plans, and to create contingency plans. Because you never know when it's going to happen, but you always have to plan for the fact that it will happen. Uh, таким образом, есть три основных аспекта, которые, о которых нужно знать и которые нужно помнить. Uh, первое — это противодействие. Uh, второе — это там, восстановление или uh, нуж, необходимо иметь резерв на случай непредвиденных обстоятельств. Uh, и uh, третье — нужно также иметь какой-то запасной резервный план на случай, если такая кибератака произошла. So one of the biggest challenges that CFOs and finance leaders uh, are facing today is when thinking about technology, is what skills are necessary? How do I get them? How do I bring them into the company? Um, how do I train my people? One of the biggest problems with which they can face the financial director when they have their technology is access to new skills, to new knowledge, to what skills and skills they need to use in the modern world. So what skills are necessary? Um, well, to add value in the future, uh, what we established in our, uh, in our research is that future finance professionals uh, will need a combination of professional qualities, what we called um, the professional quotients, seven professional quotients. And what this is is a collection of technical knowledge, skills and ability combined with interpersonal behaviours. Итак, какие же навыки необходимы? Чтобы повысить ценность будущим профессионалам в области финансов, потребуется сочетание профессиональных качеств. Всего их семь, так называемых семь коэффициентов. Это набор технических знаний, навыков, умений в сочетании с коммуникабельностью. And, and what this really means is, is that you can't, uh, you can no longer be just very, very technically minded. You have to be able to work with others. You have to be able to read somebody's emotions and understand their drivers, their concerns, their complaints, or their, their, their challenges. You have to be able to use previous experience to help future clients or to help your own business grow. Mm, таким образом, 
сейчас помимо профессиональных э, навыков, э, ва также важен эмоциональный интеллект, способность идентифицировать свои эмоции, эмоции других, использовать их, применять к задачам, регулировать, управлять ими, э, общаться э, и э, в будущем эффективно коммуницировать с э, потенциальными клиентами. Uh, these are the professional quotients I mentioned. I'm not going to go through in great detail because you can see the definitions. Um, but just very quickly uh, uh, highlighting them. Technical, uh, I've mentioned, very important. It's, it's the technologies that are available. Uh, it's, no, it's, the, it's the core finance skills, ones that we teach you in our, in our qualification, the ones that you garner through your degrees. Ethical, I'll come back to. Um, what, what in, in brief, that there are a lot of ethical challenges being created by new technologies. Uh, таким образом, не буду слишком подробно останавливаться на uh, всех uh, семи ключевых навыках. Uh, назову uh, технические и этические компетенции. Uh, технические uh, компетенции жизненно необходимы. Uh, благодаря им определяется стандарт качества, uh, соответствия. Uh, о этических компетенциях поговорим чуть позже. Uh, Uh, я вижу, что uh, все вы интеллектуалы. Uh, ключев... Следующий ключевой компонент uh, — это интеллект. But this is more about just uh, uh, getting the right answer. It's about not looking for simple routes out. It's looking for complexity and taking that complexity on um, and then looking at how you respond to new challenges. Uh, Интеллект, иными словами, это способность взять на себя решение сложной задачи, искать наиболее оптимальные решения, а э, не пользоваться какими-то самыми подручными, простыми. А затем определять, каким образом можно применить такие решения на практике. Creativity. Uh, this is the ability to use knowledge, um, in an existing knowledge in a new situation, uh, to make connections, to think about outcomes, um, and to generate new ideas. Uh, следующий ключевой аспект – творчество, способность использовать имеющиеся знания в новой ситуации, устанавливать связи, изучать потенциальные результаты и генерировать новые идеи. Vision – this is predicting future trends accurately uh, by using existing data, existing trends. Um, experience – this is the ability to understand customer expectations, um, to meet desired outcomes and to create value. Uh, видение – способность прогнозировать будущие тенденции. Uh, на основании существующих тенденций и фактов, опыт, способность, навыки понимать соответствие ожиданий клиента с желаемым результатом, также создавать ценность. The, the power of human to human uh, interface or, or the necessity of human to human interface is growing more and more important. So this is a really important question. Следующий аспект, на мой взгляд, является одним из самых важных. Это эмоциональный интеллект, способность идентифицировать свои эмоции, эмоции других, использовать их и применять к задачам, а также регулировать, управлять ими. И, наконец, последний, наиболее актуальный цифровой коэффициент использования цифровых технологий, использование интерфейса, так называемого human to human. And the last one, and of course, what we're talking about today is the digital quotient. Um, this is the awareness and application of existing and emerging digital technologies. So taking what is available, robotic process automation, AI, and thinking about how it can be applied to future challenges, to, to challenges within your business or within your clients' businesses, to improve uh, outcomes, outputs. В рамки цифрового коэффициента входит как искусственный интеллект, так и автоматизация и роботизация. То есть это применение существующих, появляющихся цифровых технологий в областях практики, стратегии и культуры. Окей, okay. ethics. Um, we know that businesses are changing around us. Uh, we're moving away from traditional bricks and mortar companies to, to digital companies, ones that they sell services or they have services which they offer free um, but promote marketing and things like that. And, and what we're seeing is that these new types of businesses are creating new uh, ethical challenges, new scenarios we've not seen before. Um, and that means navigating these challenges is much, much more important. 
Что же, касается, что же касается этики, вопросов этики, в настоящее время бизнес-индустрия постоянно меняется, развивается. Мы уходим от понятия традиционной, традиционного бизнеса, как спикер обозначил, brick and mortar, mortar, то есть дословно кирпич и цемент. Для того, чтобы продвигать современные идеи маркетинга, предстоит столкнуться с вызовами, с вызовами в частности, этическими вызовами. So as automation increases, uh, ethical judgment will become more important for senior leaders uh, to ensure that digital adoption and innovation doesn't compromise proper behavior, behavior that we take so importantly. И по мере развития автоматизации, здравое этическое суждение, этические ценности станут чрезвычайно важными для высших должностных лиц, чтобы гарантировать, что инновации и цифровое внедрение не ставят под угрозу корректное поведение. So why is this important? Well, ethical behavior helps us build trust in society. Um, we've seen a number of scandals recently about uh, digital companies misusing our data, um, uh, allowing companies to access very, very sensitive material about us. Um, and we as a society haven't really uh, been prepared for that. Now, anecdotally, if you think about a new company, the only people that are regulated in that company, that are actually held to an ethical code of conduct, that they've signed up, that, they've, uh, that somebody else monitors their behavior, are accountants and lawyers. No other profession within a digital company is going to be regulated like that. And so it's so important that you as future finance professionals adhere to those ethical uh, behaviors and that where you see future challenges, compromises or, or uh, potential for, for uh, mistrust, that you intervene, that you, uh, you use your ethical foundations and you stop the company doing that. Почему это важно? Прежде всего, этическое поведение помогает укрепить доверие в эпоху цифровых технологий. Все мы знаем с вами, осведомлены о примерах, когда происходит утечка данных, в частности, утечка какой-то очень важной или личной информации. Поэтому способность профессиональных бухгалтеров создавать ценность зависит от их способности развивать доверие заинтересованных лиц, включая общественность. Поэтому вам, как будущим сотрудникам финансового сектора и настоящим сотрудникам, важно также обратить внимание на этическую сторону вопроса. Если в компании происходят какие-то вещи, которые, по вашему мнению, являются неэтичными, вы должны принять участие в предотвращении таких подобных актов. Okay, so what does this have to do with emerging markets? Uh, well, так какой же это имеет отношение к развивающимся рынкам? We know that technology is changing pretty much everything, everything around us. It's changing how we shop, how we work, how we move, how we eat, and even how we love. Мы знаем, что технологии меняют практически все, как мы делаем покупки, работаем, двигаемся, едим и даже любим. Uh, and learning is absolutely no exception. И обучение не является исключением. This image for, is from the, the WOW lecture room at the IE Business School in Madrid. Uh, they're using this room to teach students remotely. Using AI, the lecturer can measure engagement and focus through eye tracking and facial position. So no longer falling asleep in lectures, no longer looking away at your phone whilst you're supposed to be listening. Um, and what this does, it gives uh, two outcomes. The first is to measure student performance. So if there are issues around their performance, you can intervene early. And the second is to give accessibility, is to increase accessibility to people in all countries. Um, I know that Kazan University uh, attracts students from all around the world, is looking to invest in these areas. Um, and it also actually gives accessibility to people with mobility issues. They're often a forgotten part of society. Those that aren't able to travel to get into lecture rooms or to, uh, to move around that freely, this gives them the opportunity to engage and to learn as well. На, ваших, на экране вы видите изображение из цифровой аудитории в, в международной бизнес-школе в Мадриде. Эту аудиторию они используют для дистанционного обучения студентов. Используя искусственный интеллект, лектор может измерить вовлеченность и фокус, отслеживая глаза и положение лица. Так, такие технологии позволяют, дают доступ людям во всех странах и тем, у кого есть проблемы с мобильностью. В частности, в России развиваются такие технологии. Эти современные технологии позволяют 
а, отслеживать и, и оценить вовлеченность студентов в процесс обучения и также а, позволяют а, людям получить доступ к образованию. Okay, so when thinking about technology adoption, there's two points. You need to understand the starting rate, uh, the starting point, as well as the rate of adoption. So you can see Russia is somewhere, it's just there. Uh, it's at the top end of the adoption rate. So Russia is doing fantastically well in adopting new technologies. Um, and it's about halfway up the baseline. So it's not the greatest starting point, but the progress is rapid. Um. Размышляя о внедрении технологий, важно понимать как отправную точку, так и скорость внедрения этих технологий. Вы можете видеть Россию на верхнем уровне темпов внедрения технологий и примерно на полпути, находясь на, на базовом уровне. То есть таким see... образом Россия делает очень быстрые шаги на пути к внедрению современных технологий. Uh, interestingly, emerging markets tend to populate the middle. They have the best adoption rates, but uh, the lower starting points. Emerging, uh, emerged markets, sorry, Western markets, are actually in a bit of a, uh, a tough situation. They've got a high baseline, but actually the new adoption rate is very, very low. So if you look at the UK, which is uh, higher in terms of baseline, but lower in terms of adoption rate, we're actually struggling with the adoption of new technologies in certain areas. Что интересно, развивающиеся рынки заполняют середину, вы можете это видеть. Таким образом, отправная точка является достаточно низкой, тем не менее, темп просто является высоким. Также интересно то, что все больше западных рынков снизили свои показатели и рискуют отстать. Uh, если у вас есть мобильный телефон uh, в руке, можете... You're not in trouble, don't worry, it's not a problem. Можете, пожалуйста, его достать. Great. So everyone has their phones out. Fantastic. У всех есть мобильные телефоны. Fantastic. Mobile phones are the key to everything. Uh, the advent and global proliferation of smartphones has changed almost every aspect of our lives. For many, the phone has made the difference... The smartphone has made the difference between life and death. Мобильные телефоны сейчас ключ ко всему. Появление глобального распространения смартфонов изменило почти каждый аспект нашей жизни, и для многих телефон стал просто жизненно необходим вопросом жизни и смерти. В России очень высокие показатели. Это здорово. Mobile banking in Sub-Saharan Africa has been a very, very good example of the power of technology. A long, long time ago. Возьмем, к примеру, мобильный банкинг в странах Африки и к югу от Сахары. A long while back, people would have to walk miles and miles to access their nearest bank, their nearest physical bank, um, and that may have open, been open one or two days a week, and they may have run out of cash. But what we've seen is mobile money accounts like M-Pesa have removed the need for physical banking. Uh, for the physical banking infrastructure that the West is actually more dependent on. Um, and looking at other markets similar to Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia and Southeast Asia are seeing uh, a greater rate of mobile banking as well. Um, итак, в странах Африки люди должны были uh, бы пройти мили, чтобы получить доступ к своему ближайшему банку, чтобы снять деньги. Uh, этот банк мог быть открыт только один или два раза в неделю. Um, такие поставщики платежных услуг Uh, как МПЭЗа, устранили необходимость в uh, той же физической банковской инфраструктуре, от которой Запад uh, зависит больше всего, в большей степени. Мы также наблюдаем высокий темп роста в Южной и Юго-Восточной Азии. Does anyone here have a digital bank account? Revolut, Monzo, Starling, anyone heard of them? У вас есть какой-то дополнительный uh, банк, uh, мобильный банкинг, uh, счет банки uh, из вышеперечисленных? Are there, any, are there any Russian equivalents? Are there any Russian digital banks? Есть ли какие-то русские эквиваленты? Oh, we, we have uh, Sberbank Online. This is the mobile banking service. Uh, but they still we have, have branches, don't they? Yeah, so... Yeah, okay, anyway, Tinko so... Tinkoff, <laughs> it's only the internet based Yes, yeah, so that's bank. exactly it. So Tinkoff Bank, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking about. It's a great example. So again, those banks uh, are growing rapidly across the UK and Europe because... Um, generally, younger people don't want to visit branches. They don't need to visit branches. They don't carry cash around with them, which I'll come to. 
Таким образом, эта технология активно развивается в Европе, в Великобритании. Больше не нужно с собой носить наличку. Есть ли любители рэпа в аудитории? No? Okay. <laughs> um, well, there's a famous song called Cream, and it stands for Cash Rules Everything Around Me. Um, but actually, that's not true anymore. In the past year, I've traveled to about a dozen countries, um, and I haven't taken cash out once. I haven't needed to. Everything I do, I do on card, I do contactless, I do online. Um, and so what we're seeing is, is that as we move to a cashless society, Uh, we see a number of really important patterns. We see financial literacy and financial inclusion improving because people don't need uh, physical banks. They have more access to banking, to financial products on their phone than they ever had before. Есть, почему я спросил, есть известная рэп-песня под названием «Крим». Это название означает «Наличные управляют всем, что меня окружает». Но это больше не так. В этом году я побывал почти в дюжине стран и не думаю, что хоть раз снял деньги во время своего пребывания. Переходя к безналичному обществу, мы видим, например, ряд закономерностей. Появляется широкий доступ к финансовым услугам, повышается эффективность не знаю, там, финансов различных услуг. И And thinking about wider society issues, uh, access to healthcare, uh, to life insurance, uh, to savings account, that's all improving as well, which means that we can manage our money better. And it also means that tax collection, and it's important for accountants, finance professionals, is becoming a lot more efficient and a lot harder to evade. Таким образом, когда мы переходим к безналичному обществу, расширяется доступ к здравоохранению, повышается эффективность сбора налогов, мы можем легче управлять своими финансовыми активами. And with, with uh, mobile platforms, we're seeing the number of businesses being created increasing year on year. Um, as, as the barriers to entry decrease, you don't need large sums of capital to start a new business anymore. You can do it from your bedroom, you can do it from your friend's house or from your kitchen. Uh, you, can, you don't have to take out huge loans from the bank anymore. You can do it with the money that you have. Мы также наблюдаем тенденцию, как растет количество создаваемых предприятий, поскольку барьеры на входе уменьшаются. То есть такие мобильные технологии позволяют любому человеку начать и заниматься собственным делом из спальни, кухни, из дома друзей и так далее. То есть мобильные прикладные технологии дают любому человеку гораздо более легкую возможность стать предпринимателем. Why this is relevant for you is it means that you can become an entrepreneur a lot easier, a lot, a lot, lot easier, or you can meet entrepreneurs uh, a lot easier. You, they, they are your friends, they are people in different schools or in different classes. Anyone can start an idea, start a business now um, without the same challenges before. And the reason that you guys as finance professionals, as forward-thinking finance professionals, you are best placed to actually support them in those journeys. Mm. Таким образом, ну, как уже было выше сказано, мобильные технологии э, позволяют человеку э, легче стать предпринимателем, э, э, повышают э, мобильность, устраняют преграды, которые существовали э, до настоящего момента, и любой сейчас э, может стать предпринимателем. Okay, so you as consumers, what does that mean for you? Uh, так что это значит для вас, как для потребителей? There's a famous expression from Francis Bacon, who said, uh, if the mountain will not come to Muhammad, then Muhammad must go to the mountain. Now, in shopping terms, that was previously true. No more, though. We can pretty much order everything you want direct to our door. We no longer, said so we look, uh, no longer look for ownership as more subscription-based prov uh, providers emerge. And app-based companies are diversifying into a wider range of products challenging traditional businesses in every sector. Фрэнсис Бекон, известный автор, однажды сказал, что если гора не идет к Магомеду, тогда Магомед должен идти к горе. С точки зрения покупок это было верно ранее, раньше, но не сейчас. Сейчас мы можем заказать все, что хотим, прямо к нашей двери с доставкой. Мы больше не ищем собственников, так как появляется все больше поставщиков на основе подписки, и компании, основанные на приложениях, диверсифицируются в более широкий ассортимент продуктов, бросая вызов традиционному бизнесу в каждом секторе.
So you'll all have heard of Uber, understandably. Uh, but what this shows is even what we thought to be new, uh, you know, innovative digital companies, they're now being muscled out of markets as countries uh, produce their own local variants. Um, and thinking about entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. If there is a product that has been developed elsewhere that is coming to your market, what we're seeing is a lot of companies, a lot of individuals, copying those products and improving them, making them more locally relevant. Um, and so where you had Uber before, and that was the dominant force in the market, you now have all of these variations around the world that have either been bought, or, uh, bought out Uber's business or have muscled Uber out of the market. Мы все слышали об Uber, я уверен. На этом слайде вы можете увидеть, что даже первопроходцы в технологии, основанные на приложениях, могут быть переосмыслены локализованными местными провайдерами. Развивающиеся рынки также не являются исключением. То есть на местном рынке какой-то продукт известный, может быть переосмыслен, улучшен, доработан. The number of uh, apps being developed across emerging markets and Central Asia more specifically is rapidly increasing as young, innovative entrepreneurs see the opportunities available. Um, with this growth, gives great opportunities for international investors to enter new markets and access growing middle class consumer bases. Now you guys as finance professionals, future finance professionals, you are the ones that are going to be helping these companies uh, raise finance to value themselves to grow their business, to look for new markets, to understand the challenges of expanding, to understand international regulations. You guys are so important to how entrepreneurship flourishes. Количество приложений, разрабатываемых на развивающихся рынках, в частности в Центральной Азии, быстро растет, поскольку молодые инновационные предприниматели видят имеющиеся возможности. И благодаря этому росту у международных инвесторов появляется больше возможностей для выхода на новые рынки и доступ к растущим потребительским базам. И таким образом инновационные предприниматели, специалисты в области финансов могут использовать такие возможности за ними будущее. Uh, I want to, uh, you're probably bored of me now, but I want to make one final comparison. Я хочу сделать одно заключительное сравнение. So on the left, you can see the growth of rates in car ownership. Um, uh, and what that's showing is that within emerging, in Western markets, car ownership is actually decreasing. But in emerging markets, it's continuing to grow. Now we are thinking, you know, we're moving to bicycles and to buses and to sustainable transport and such. But actually emerging markets, we're still seeing the growth. Um, so what that means is, is that in emerging markets, the challenges are still growing. You can see from the picture on the right, the space taken for one bus to carry, uh, say, 50 people. For bicycles, a larger space. Now for everyone to have their own car, it's a hell of a lot more space. And what this means is it puts pressure on current infrastructure. Um, and so even though we have this innovation, we have the, the move towards sustainability and, and everything else, we're still seeing a growth in personal car ownership as middle, cl uh, middle class uh, rates increase. Um, but this means that there's a challenge for both you as future finance professionals um, and governments to understand. Слева вы можете увидеть темп роста автомобилей в собственности. Вы можете также увидеть пространство, необходимое для автомобилей, велосипедов и автобусов. Интересным является тот факт, что на развитых рынках этот рост достиг своего пика и сейчас фактически снижается. На развивающихся рынках, напротив, количество автомобилей, особенно среди представителей среднего класса, растет. Ну и, собственно, Растут требования к инфраструктуре, не только инфраструктуре дорог, поэтому для вас, представителей финансового сектора, это будет большим вызовом, таким образом, чтобы переосмыслить данную ситуацию и перейти к экономике устойчивого развития. Okay, that's a, a lot of information for me. I think the, the three takeaway points are this. Technology is important uh, in terms of its direction and its growth, and it's important for you as finance professionals to understand it, how it can be used, the challenges, the opportunities, the risks and the strengths. 
Um, it needs regulation and it needs regulated people like yourselves to ensure that it remains ethical and that its uses are ethical. And lastly, it needs talented people like yourselves to ensure that entrepreneurship can flourish and take advantage of the new opportunities. Итак, подведем итоги нашей сегодняшней встречи. Технологии являются очень важными. Для... Необходима также поддержка развития технологий, в частности, на развивающихся рынках. Также есть необходимость в международном регулировании технологий для обеспечения этических, поддержания этических стандартов. И также страны нуждаются в сильных кадровых ресурсах, чтобы достичь своего успеха. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you found... Большое спасибо за внимание. I hope you found something in there interesting and relevant. Uh, I think I've got time for questions. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Я не знаю, есть ли у меня questions. время для uh, вопросов. Uh, hello, my name is Aidai, and uh, I'm glad to see you today. Thank you. And yeah. thanks for this um, uh, lecture. And uh, I want to ask you about uh, Kiber and. Um, how much money can uh, big companies uh, to spend uh, spend to spend for saving data and um, fighting with uh, cyber attack? Cyber attack. Cyber, Cy cyber, cyber attack. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so the 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 answer is a little or a lot. If you are uh, an enormous bank, you will spend tens of millions on cyber. I mean, you will spend huge amounts. Stock exchanges will be one of the largest uh, uh, spenders on cybersecurity. Because imagine somebody hacked a securities exchange and messed with the stock market. The, the world, you could, lose, you could lose trillions of dollars overnight. So you have the financial service sector and the defense sector, naturally, are probably the two most protected. Um, but even small companies should extend their, they should invest in some form of cyber protection. This can be anything from malware protection and uh, you know, um, simple downloadable uh, software, antivirus software. But uh, a lot of it is around behaviors. So it's educating your, yourself and your teams, uh, people that work for you, about the risks, like basic, basic security risks, not opening emails from suspicious addresses, not putting in USB sticks into your sensitive computers or into your work computers. Um, there's just a, uh, there are some, some very simple hygiene uh, elements to it. Um, but that said, the cybersecurity industry is growing rapidly. I know it's, it's very, very uh, big in Russia. Um, and so if you have a company or starting a company, do invest in your cybersecurity. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Konstantin. Uh, thank you for your lecture, uh, and I have um, uh, one question about uh, cash and uh, credit cards. Sure. Uh, this. Uh, what do you think about uh, this uh, point of view? Uh, if we pay by cash, uh, we could save our money uh, because uh, we have something uh, material in our hands and we give these uh, material things to our people. But if we pay by credit card, it's something like um, some numbers appears and dis disappears you know, on the screen, and uh, the uh, we have no these feelings that we uh, give something material yeah. to another people. Uh, you understand? That is that's a very very good question, and it's a challenge that uh, regulators, uh, governments, and banks are thinking about. You're right. I mean, when you see it leaving your, your pocket or your hand, it, it feels, it hurts a little bit, you know, you're spending your money. Um, the real challenge is for banks, uh, for, for financial institutions to, to educate their customers. So if you look at, um, I don't have a, uh, I don't have the pictures with me, but um, my bank tells me when I've spent money. It, it will come up on my phone, you have spent this much in this transaction. It will say, you have spent this much this week. It will say, if I go into the app, you have spent a hundred pounds on entertainment, 10 pounds on food, um, uh, 200 pounds on shopping, 
And so it gives me a breakdown of what I'm spending. So, it so, so there, are, there are ways in which, call them banks, they're trying to give you more information about how you use your money so you can be more aware. Interestingly, some of the new banks are creating um, what we call a digital vault or a savings account for you. So if you spend, uh, I don't know, 78 rubles, two rubles to round it up to 80 will go into a savings pot. And every transaction you make, the difference between um, the amount and the, the nearest 10 will go into a savings pot. And it's to encourage uh, you to say, it's to take saving away from you in the sense that it doesn't make it, a, it's, a, it's a passive action. So yes, you, there is a challenge around losing money from your pocket, but also they're trying to bring in um, methods to ensure your financial uh, security and stability. And of course, accessing credit ratings is a lot more easy now. Understanding your own credit rating, what it means for you, your future, what, like, uh, what, uh, what cards you can get, what loans you can get. These are all important. It's education around that. And actually, uh, uh, the biggest challenge or the biggest uh, uh, responsibility, I think, for this actually lies with schools. And I don't think schools do enough to educate their children uh, around financial literacy. So what are loans? What are savings rates, insurance, credit cards? How does it, what, it, what is, uh, we understand percentages, but when you put it in context of a 35% APR credit card, what does that mean? And we don't do enough on that. Uh, understanding compound interest and that kind of stuff. So yes, again, going back to your point, it is, uh, we save physical cash because we can see it leaving, but, Digital cash gives us much greater data analytics onto how we spend. Because I can't imagine any of you guys, when you're using cash, say, well, I spent this much cash on food. You wouldn't do that, would you? But your bank does it for you now, or your bank can do it for you. So that's, I hope, an answer to your question. Hi, Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I saw there that <coughs> the rate of dis strongly disagree is higher than <coughs> sorry higher than disagree. So what is the reason? Uh, where we can are see we? here that strongly disagree is higher than disagree and don't know. So what is the reason? That's a very <laughs> that's a good, good question. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> I Can think that's strongly disagree, disagree yeah, I think, I think collectively, strongly disagree and disagree uh, is obviously a lot lower than agree and, uh, and upwards. Um, I imagine that comes down to personal scepticism. So if you think that, uh, if, you th if, you are, if you think that there's no link between it at all, between ethics and trust, then ch you're going to give a much, your chances are you're going to give a much stronger answer. Um, because you, you, you can't sort of not believe it, you just absolutely don't believe it. Uh, I think looking at agree and strongly agree, it's probably easier to differentiate between, yeah, I, I think there is a link to it, um, so I agree, but again, it's the sort of the very strong voices that say either strongly agree or strongly disagree. So that's really where it is. I think it's the same comparison between, yeah, on the agree side and strongly disagree side. I don't... I don't there's probably lots of psychology around how we do uh, surveys like this, like how anyone does a survey. You know, the worst answer is always the middle one. And actually, you want to see the outliers. But yeah, that's um, beyond my knowledge and education, I'm afraid. Hi. <coughs> and thank you for the lecture. Yeah, that's right. It was interesting, yeah. My question is about the future of accounting. Now we yeah. know that the companies like spend lots of money uh, to develop the artificial intelligence. And what do you think? Like, is it real that the AI will replace the real accountants? Uh, yes and no. It will replace some of the tasks that you do. Um, it will replace uh, the, the, the data entry work and the pattern detection work. Um, but it's not going to replace how you engage with your clients. And this is the point. We're, as ACCA, we're not creating 
bookkeepers. We're not creating people that are very good at Excel for, the, for, for data entry. We're creating people that um, are able to understand how to work with clients and how to find new solutions. So the accountant isn't disappearing. The accountant is changing. It, is, it, is, it has to stay ahead of the curve or it will be automated. Um, but again, I mean, why data entry is really boring. Who wants to actually do that? No one wants to sit through uh, uh, typing numbers into Excel endlessly. It's, it's so dull. The point is, is that with technology like that, but with advancing professions or, or qualifications or education and continuing education, is that you understand how to utilize that to your effect. Now, somebody else might not understand how that, all that works. Your client might not understand how all that works. Your responsibility is to understand how that works and to build confidence with them that they are getting a better product. So. Going back to your to sort of initial question, uh, yes, some accountants will be automated or their, their jobs. Uh, no, because accountants can stay ahead of the curve. Any more questions? I don't know how much longer I have, but I have to say more. Anything outside of accountancy or just general? Hello, my Hi. name is Aziz. We know that in accounting process nowadays, uh, people using uh, the program of 1S, I think. But uh, can you tell us uh, which programs that are using nowadays abroad, Europe or US, in accounting process? Yeah. The last <laughs> updated programs. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, so we work incredibly closely with with Sage, who I'm sure some of you will have heard of. There's also a company from New Zealand called Xero, who are doing a lot in the data entry space and in the, uh, the sort of automation space. Um, in terms of higher level artificial intelligence, I, I don't know what's being used directly for accounting, but um, it, it, companies like Oracle and, and, and SAS will be doing a lot of this stuff as well. Uh, Xero is a very good uh, example of a company that is trying to automate a lot of these services. And it's not so much uh, companies are using Xero. Accountancy firms are using Xero. So they can, uh, they can, they can offload a lot of this automated work. Um, in terms of the higher stuff, I, I'd have to look it up. But, but I'm certainly happy to send some information afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, my name is Sofia, and I'm really interested in emotional intelligence. Uh, in which way will it develop? Uh, Thank you. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good question. It's 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 not a, a, an easy answer. I think the the point is that we need to be we need to become more aware of our own emotions in the workplace and other people's emotions. And this isn't about whether somebody's happy or sad. It's about what are what are the what are their drivers? So, um, to take to take okay to take the consumer base as an example, what we found in our research is that uh, us as employees or we'll call it, us as millennials. I'm still a millennial, amazingly. Um, us as millennials, we care a lot more about society and about public value and sustainability than any generation previous to us. Now. If you're a company that's operating in a uh, space where you don't think about society value, you don't think about sustainability, you don't think about the future, it's harder for you to attract clients that do think about that. It's harder for you to attract talent that thinks about that. Um, we apparently as millennials are less driven by, by money. Uh, we're more driven by job satisfaction. So if you're getting the best, how do you get the best out of your employees? if you're not aware of those drivers behind them. Yeah? So, so it is partly to do with the, the sort of business consumer interface, but it's also to do with uh, engaging your team members, engaging your juniors, uh, how you engage with your seniors. Um, there is so much value placed on, obviously, professional learning uh, and, and you know, um, qualifications and such, but mentoring is incredibly powerful. So firms, Big practices, big companies need to recognise that mentoring is a really good way of nurturing talent because they get that human-to-human -human connection, because they can see a pathway to leadership. Not just saying, do this qualification, which is important, 
um, or you know you have uh, to just do your work and get on with it and you'll get promoted if you if you perform well it's actually somebody that can lead them in the right direction and that all sits within the emo uh, emotional intelligence space um, it's really about your uh, engagement with people on a more meaningful level Right. Thank you very much. It's been a really a real pleasure to speak to you all today. I hope um, you found some use in that. Uh, if you have any questions about ACCA, about our research, which is all available online for free, it's all on our website. Uh, and we also have an app, ACCA Insights. Uh, I recommend having a look at that. There's lots of really fun stuff about, I say fun stuff, um, lots of interesting stuff about machine learning, about uh, international trade, about uh, robotics, all, everything you might want to know about this space. Uh, sustainability, we do a lot of stuff on sustainable development goals, um, future of society. Yeah, interesting. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, it was um, a pleasure to uh, be with you here today. I hope that the... Um, Прошу прощения. Мне было очень приятно быть здесь с вами сегодня. Надеюсь, что информация, которую я с вами сегодня поделился, была полезна для вас. Если у вас есть какие-то еще вопросы относительно деятельности ассоциации ACCA, вы можете посетить официальный веб-сайт и узнать больше, в частности, о таких вопросах, как автоматизированная роботизация, также искусственный интеллект, машинное обучение и о прочих интересующих вас темах. Uh, yeah, I'll start those.